welcome back yet again. Michael Zoll here, doing a video tutorial series for West Side Electronic Music. This is part three of our Wise to Unity integration series, and this time we're going to be covering more ambient sounds uh, coming from multiple sound sources on our map. In particular, we'll be working with doing the sound of this lake over here and of some ambient bird sounds that cover this whole map. And cover would be the key word here. We have sound effects that we want to have be 3D audio sources. And they're going to cover large areas of the map. So, you know, we want to be able to hear our lake from a decent distance and uh, as though it's coming from a large area of the map of the, um, of the lake over here. And same with the birds. We're going to use the same sound effect, but we want to have a large coverage area. Using large mode is going to help us to do that. And so we'll, uh, we'll get that going in WISE. And then uh, bring it over into Unity and, uh, and get all this stuff positioned. So we'll go ahead and pop over into our WISE project and uh, start getting things set up. All right, back into our WISE project here. So this is going to be pretty basic on the WISE side. Uh, we're just getting some basic uh, events going on here that are of the lake and of the birds. So I've created a couple loops in Pro Tools, and I want to import them into my project. There's my lake and my birds. I'll drag them in, and we want them just as um, standard sound effects objects. So we'll go ahead and import those. And there we go, you can see my ambient birds, my ambient lake. So, just a couple things with the, uh, with those objects. They're, they're ambient sounds and they don't stop, so we want to make sure they're looped. And they're also going to be um, 3D. So we want to select 3D. We're going to make a new attenuation here in our share set. So, and we'll call this we'll call this one uh, environment. You know, it's the lake and the birds, so we'll just call that one environment. And I'm just going to try to guess what I did for my last project here. I set this maybe to like 50. Um, same sort of deal with you know the ramping up attenuation, you know, something like that. And then we'll get a uh, a low pass or a low pass filter going as well, custom, and you know something like that. Maybe, uh, you know, have that not be so much as we're closer towards the, uh, towards the lake. So here we can hear our lake sound and uh, make sure. Uh, so 3D, we're going to use our environment attenuation. Um, lake, edit, and now we can hear. Um, get this one looping as well, and you know, so I can still hear the lake off in the distance. Uh, so maybe get that low pass filter uh, going a little more. Maybe have quite a bit of low-pass filter going on at a relatively large distance. You can have, have like an opposite kind of curve going here, something like that. Again, control click. <clears throat> I can look at both of my curves and. Uh, And that'll be fine. I think I fine-tuned this more in my original project, but this will be fine for our purposes for right now. So we'll stop that. Um, have our make sure both of our uh, sound effects are using our 3D audio and using our same environment attenuation. Um, yep. So we're all good to go here, and they're both looping infinitely. 
Yep. Okay, so now we just need to make some basic play events for each one of these and then drop them into our ambient sound bank. Easy enough. Default work unit. Lake. Uh, we'll call it water. <clears throat> and then one more for the birds. For the birds. And we'll go back to our... <clears throat> event editor and get each one of these events. Uh, this is the water one, so I'm going to add my lake waves into there. And my birds, I'll add my birds into this one. Then we'll go to our sound bank F7 for the sound bank manager. <clears throat> There's our ambient sound bank. We'll add our birds and our water. Here's some two that I was doing before. I'll just delete these out. So now we have our birds, torches, and water in our ambient sound bank. And we'll go ahead and generate these sound banks. So we should, should see these new events and uh, an updated sound bank in our Unity project. So let's go check that out. OK, so we're back in our Unity project. We're going to get these bird and lake sounds going and we want them to spread over a large area. So, you know, I have my wise picker. I see that it has updated with my bird and water uh, events, which has been updated uh, into the ambient sound bank. The ambient sound bank is already loading up into a, um, a empty object that we place towards the gate of the map. So everything that's referenced by uh, or to the ambient sound bank is going to load up already on our map. So what we're going to do is get these uh, get these placed. So rather than you know trying to attach you know these events to some huge object in here, in this case you know the water of the lake, what we're going to do is uh, just create our own sound sources and our own empty objects for that. So you can see I've made a new empty, and I called it sound sources. And then I made a, another new empty object, named it lake, and dragged our water event into, the, uh, into that empty object. So we can uncheck environment aware. That's going to be the default. We can uncheck that. And as you can see now, I have it positioned where I want for my first sound source to be. And I just want to look at something real quick. Is it going to show my attenuation? It will. So you can see the attenuation uh, sphere that is uh, that we've created. So, and that's going to follow the curve that we made, you know, in uh, in Unity, in Wise rather. So let's go ahead and play test this and see what we got. So I'm going to run towards the lake at the end of the map and. I think I put it close to this dock. So you can hear uh, just barely off in the distance there, I can hear that water. It's being low pass attenuated. As I get closer, the low pass filter eases off, and I can hear more of the high frequency content. And uh, yeah, so we have our attenuation working well, you know, how we wanted it to, but you know, we have a large area here. This is a big lake and we need to have this sound effect happening, you know, all over the shore of this lake. Oh look, our warrior princess has died again. All right, well we're just going to leave her there because we're worried about this lake right now. So as you can see, we can't hear our lake anymore. We're too far away from our sound source that we placed over there. So we're going to need to have, to, we're going to have to find a way to spread this sound out, <coughs> uh, you know, around this lake so that we can hear it. So I'll go ahead and back out here into our editor. And you could, you know, copy this sound source and just spread it around. Uh, but we're not going to do that. We're going to use another feature in here for uh, position type. And what that is, is it's called large mode. So we go over here to our lake empty object that has our ambient uh, water sound attached to it. We'll change this to large mode. 
and you'll see this little dialog box pop up here. So first thing you want to do is add a point. And so now that is a, uh, that is one point that this um, water sound effect is going to play from. And we can hide the main transform if we want. I'll show you what the main transform can be useful for uh, in a bit. But we do want to hide it, and we want to add more points. So now we have created another point. Click on it, and we're going to move it. You know, we're going to move a few of these, you know, around the edge of the lake. And to help help us with uh, figuring out how we want this to spread, we can show our attenuation for the current events, and it's going to show us our attenuation. And so we'll just go ahead and throw a couple in here. You know, I'll add another point, click on it, and lost my selection there. Well, that's the main transform. Let's hide that. Here's our new point. There we go. Sometimes it's a pain in the butt to move these things around. Uh, you just lose your selection, that kind of thing. You know, you get better at it as you practice. But um, yeah, these uh, these points in the large mode, in particular, were sometimes uh, a real pain in the uh, in the rear. We'll go ahead and add a, another point. It's going to start from where our main transform is. So uh, over here and something like this. We can kind of back out a little bit and just see the coverage that we're getting from this sound effect that we dropped in here. And we can kind of tailor this, you know, to wh where we want the coverage to be. And get this and maybe something like that. And, <clears throat> and again, the main transform, you saw that I selected it once and moved everything, but if you do, want to move all of these points, you can select the main transform and move them all as a group, which is nice. So you had a developer that made some changes to the map, maybe positioned this town in a different area of the map, but had, uh, you know, the same layout. You could uh, grab them all at once and just, you know, move them to where you wanted them to go without changing their, uh, you know, the orientation to each other. So anyway, there we go. We've got uh, some large mode uh, sound sources going on, so we can test and see if we're going to hear our lake all over the shore. I'm going to bet that we do and that we're going to like it. All right, I hear my lake here, and and over here. All right, jump over that boat. This footstep is just maddening. Oh, she's alive this time. But there we go, we can hear a couple more of our, you know, lake sounds from the points that we dropped in to spread this sound across the edge of our lake. And there you go. So. We'll just do that one more time, just to review, adding in some bird sound effects as well, and then that'll be the end of this. So I'll create a new empty in here, call it birds, drop that into my sound sources. Uh, there's my birds, where do I want my first one to be? Yeah, we can get them kind of uh, positioned around the edge of town here. And so we'll start with our first one over in the corner over here. And we'll give these some height, which will kind of help with uh, how the attenuation gets perceived as well by the listener. All right, something like that. And then we'll, uh, so we have our empty birds object. So we'll grab our event, drop that sucker in there lose the environment aware and we will <clears throat> show 
show our attenuation for the birds. And we'll go ahead and change that to large mode. Going to add a point. There we go. Our first one's where we want. We'll hide the main transform, add another point, select it, move it, get a little bit of overlap going. And we're just going to keep adding a few more points. Add, oh, lose your selection, add a point, select it. Uh, hide the main transform, select our point, move it over here. All right. And we'll just get one more going. There we go. And we'll bring that over here. Okay. So let's test this. Here we go, we can hear our birds. Got some 3D audio going on with those, and can hear them there, and there we go. Can hear them off to the right there, and you know, kind of coming from you know over in this uh, grassy area over here, and. Uh, Remember having another one over here on this side of town. There's our lake and our birds. It's a beautiful thing. So there you go. Uh, that's an easy way to get some multiple sound sources spread around your map so that uh, you know your attenuations can you know fill up the area of the map for you know these ambient sounds. Uh, it's a nice little feature rather than having to, you know, create a bunch of empty game objects and, you know, spread them all over the map. Um, so that should be it for, you know, working with uh, ambient sounds and, uh, and with the large mode. Uh, the next one we're going to, the next video, next installment in our video series, we're going to start working with doing these footsteps that we've been talking about. And this is going to be quite a bit of work for these next uh, for these next videos, we have lots of lots of um, of audio files to work with, lots of different types of containers to work with, some different uh, event types that we're going to have to work with, and uh, there's just all sorts of stuff. And we're going to delve a little deeper into doing some more, uh, you know, some more complex audio events and uh, that kind of thing uh, in Wise and Unity. So thanks again for watching. We'll see you at the next one. You have yourself a kick-ass day.